So, beetles, like everything else on this wall, are insects. Uh, all insects share a couple of characteristics. If you've missed the last episode, I'll go over that real quick. Uh, they have three main body parts. They have their head, their middle section, which is known as a thorax, and then their back end, which is known as an abdomen. All insects have six legs, and most of them will have either two or four wings, uh, depending on what species it is. Some will use their wings much more than others. Uh, beetles belong to the order known as Coleoptera, which is ancient Greek for uh, sheathed wings. And that's because if you look, a lot of these beetles, you know, you'd see, you wouldn't even know that they had wings unless you actually saw them take off because their top wings are what are known as elytra. So this hard outer shell is actually a wing. They have four wings, but really only two of them are used for flying. The top two have since hardened and kind of become uh, like a shield to protect them till when they actually need them. Certain species of beetles will use their wings much more than others. Uh, some of them, like ground beetles, they're, they've much, uh, they're, they'd rather run, they are runners, but if they get into a pinch, they might actually use their wings to take off. So depending on the species, uh, you might see their wings a lot more. As beetles grow and develop, they go through what is known as true or complete metamorphosis, which is four stages. So they go uh, from egg to larva to pupa to adult. Another great, more familiar example would be uh, like butterflies go through complete metamorphosis. So we think about the egg and then you think of, of the caterpillar uh, to the adult. So they actually uh, drastically change what they look like as they grow up. Whereas when we talked about in our last video, dragonflies uh, go through an incomplete metamorphosis where they go from egg to nymph right to adult. So they kind of skip that larva phase. So they they still kind of look like the um, adults when they are young, as opposed to beetles when they are young, uh, they look much different than what the adults turn out to be. So a perfect example of the differences between adults and their larvae uh, would be this species right here. You can find these uh, in pretty much every one of our ponds and wetlands at Mequon Nature Preserve. This is a predaceous diving beetle. Um, so obviously when I say diving beetle, the, these guys are swimmers and yet you can see he still has wings. So every beetle still has wings, and if the time comes, he can uh, fly away. But he, he would definitely prefer to swim. Now, this is what they look like in their adult form. However, when they are younger in their larval form, they look much different. Uh, they don't look anything like uh, the adults. They're actually known, uh, they have a different name. They're known as water tigers. Um, and they are very, very vicious predators, both um, in their larval and adult form. So when you look at the actual uh, larva, you can see just how much different they look. They still possess the legs and the mouth parts, but they, they have a much longer uh, tube-like body because they look much more uh, like a larva. And they'll actually spend a long time uh, swimming around in ponds and hunting anything from aquatic invertebrates to fish to tadpoles before they actually um, crawl out onto land. And that is when they undergo their final change, and then they end up looking like this after they have um, bury themselves in the ground and they, they change themselves kind of like you would imagine a butterfly would. So that would be the complete metamorphosis. Beetles are one of nature's greatest success stories as there are a lot of them. Uh, when we compare them to other species of animals, uh, there are about, that we know of, there are about 6,000 species of mammals, uh, 9,000 species of birds, and around 28,000 species of fish. Compare that to, this is just beetles, I'm not even talking about uh, all the insects. There are 350,000 species of beetles. They make up 40% of the uh, insect population uh, for each species. Whereas um, they are 25% of the world's species. So if we were to line up every single animal in the world, one in four of those down that line would always be a beetle. It's crazy how many there are out there. Uh, this is our entire beetle collection right now on the wall. Uh, this, is, this is nothing. If I actually wanted to pin every beetle that was probably, every species that was up on uh, out on the preserve, I need much more than a wall. There are a lot of them. And why is that? Uh, it's, it's because they're just, they're very successful and they're very diverse. They, uh, you can see not every beetle on here looks the same. They have, they're different colors, different sizes, they have different mouth parts. It's because they have all adapted to different lifestyles. Butterflies, uh, for the most part, the adults are all feeding on that same uh, food source. There are a few ex exceptions, uh, but beetles will pretty much have adapted to eat pretty much anything. So some of them are specialists in eating other insects, other uh, animals, so they're carnivores, where a lot of them are herbivores, so they're eating all the different types of plants out there. A lot more detrivores, so they are eating dead things. They're 
whether it be an animal or, or a tree that's fallen over, uh, their job is to decompose those things. Uh, they have adapted to living during the day and night. Some species are act more active during the day and night. So some are protected from night predators and others are protected from day predators. Uh, being insects, they reproduce a lot more young. Uh, it's not just one or two kids. They have lots and lots of kids. And so that gives them a better chance of having some of them go on to uh, continue their species. Um, they have, especially um, some of the ones with these big pinchers, they have good defenses from things that are trying to eat them. So they can bite back. They have big, uh, big jaws. Whereas others will actually have chemical defenses. Some as simple as tasting bad or smelling bad. If any of you have ever had any experience with um, some of those Asian ladybugs, uh, if you've ever you know, squished one that got inside in the fall, they kind of have a foul smell to them. It's because they are trying to smell bad so that they won't get eaten. You don't eat something that tastes bad, and, and they know that, and that's their, that's their uh, tactic. Others have a much more sinister chemical to them, such as uh, our blister beetles here, um, where if you were to mishandle one and they weren't, they weren't too happy that you were holding them, they'll actually leave a nasty blister because the chemical will react negatively with your skin. Um, so, and then pretty much when you look at them all, they're built like tanks. So if I was a bird and I had to choose between a beetle or a caterpillar, I'd probably choose the caterpillar because it's a lot softer. Uh, these beetles, when we talk about that elytra, that hardened wing, it's a nice, it's like a shield. And the rest of their carapace, that exoskeleton, is all hard. They're all hard on the outside. So they're like little tanks uh, that are also mobile. So we know that they can fly. We've discussed that. If they don't want to be somewhere and they want to go somewhere far away, they all have the ability of flight and that allows them to go and colonize another area of land. If they say, oh, I'm not... I'm not too happy with this uh, section of woods. Let's go somewhere else. They can fly and find new lands. So they are very, very successful species. Because of all that success, beetles have filled many roles in the environment, and therefore they are both very important for the environment and for us. Um, some of them act as pollinators, and we know we need to have pollinators to have fruits and vegetables and uh, na you know natural foliage that we like. Uh, they act very well as population control of, of other invertebrates. Um, two great examples would be uh, caterpillars. So if caterpillars were left unchecked, they could strip uh, all the plants of their leaves and we wouldn't want that. And so there's even a, a beetle on here whose name is Caterpillar Hunter. So a lot of these uh, hunters, they'll go out and they, they control the population of those caterpillars. Um, or if anyone here is a gardener, uh, you probably know what aphids are and you probably don't like them because they are really bad for your plants because they will, uh, and, you know, they're, they're damaging to a lot of the plants that we like both in the garden and in nature. And so uh, ladybugs actually are a great example of a beetle that loves to eat aphids. Uh, and there are many different beetle species, both adults and larvae, that feed uh, solely on aphids. Uh, they're a food source for many other uh, animals. They, uh, I know I said they're built like tanks and they have all these great defenses, but they're not perfect. They still feed a lot of other animals, which is, which is good. It's important that they uh, do fill that niche, that they eat and be eaten. Um, they're great detrivores. Uh, bacteria and things do break down stuff when it dies. Uh, the microscopic stuff does help break stuff down, but it's, it's very slow. If it wasn't for these, you know, these macro guys, if it wasn't for these little larger guys who, who actually eat all the dead things, um, we'd have a lot of dead animals laying around. The decay rate would take much longer and there'd be dead stuff everywhere. And so we, we kind of, they have a thankless job, but they're, they're actually very important, both in nature and actually um, natural history museums. A lot of times you'll see uh, whole skeletons of animals. Um, usually they'd either have to boil it down and actually get all the extra stuff, those bones, to clean them. There are actually beetles that they uh, employ to clean those bones for them. It's much quicker. Um, and actually, it's funny, there's, there's one beetle that they love to have in a museum, and then the other beetle that they don't is known as a museum beetle. They've specialized in eating um, all the animals that have been stuffed and mounted, and those are known as museum beetles. So that's actually a beetle that we don't want. While I'm on the topic of the pros and cons of beetles, or pretty much any animal, I'd like to talk about invasive species. So uh, a beetle that uh, is definitely an invasive here, and is definitely one that a lot more people might be familiar with, is the emerald ash borer, if you haven't heard that. It is responsible for the decimation of the ash tree in North America. Uh, they, they don't go after mountain ash, it's the true ash tree that they go for. And they get their name borer from the fact that the larvae actually dig tunnels through it. They bore their way through it all throughout the uh, fall and winter uh, before they emerge in spring where the adults will lay the eggs on the tree. So these guys were probably brought over 
um, in crates because they were boring beetles, so they were in the wood, and then they emerged out, and so by shipping this species from another part of the uh, world over, it has is, it is really caused a problem. So invasive species are never good. They don't really have any benefits. So right here I have a chunk of ash wood. Uh, all the tunnels that you see here, that are from the emerald ash borer larva as they burrow their way through it, and that is what damages and overall will eventually kill the tree. Uh, I have right here, this is what they look like when they are a larva. So they're this long tubular um, organism here and the head is actually on the front right there. So they look much different than the adult. That's what that complete metamorphosis is all about. The adult looks more like this. They are a small beetle. They are not huge, tiny little green. They are, they are kind of pretty with that uh, green fluorescence, but don't let that uh, beauty fool you. They are very, very destructive. Um, when they come out of the tree, they'll actually leave uh, often or not. It's a, it's a D, it's like a capital D shaped hole. So that's kind of their signature when they uh, bore their way out. So definitely a species that we don't want here, but unfortunately with invasives, once they get here, it's pretty hard to deal with them, which is why it's a good lesson to just uh, stop them from getting here in the first place. So it wouldn't be a bug tour if I didn't actually uh, zoom in a little more and give you a little bit more in depth of some of the species we would see at Mequon Nature Preserve. So I might show off a couple of my uh, favorite examples now. So first up, this is a six-spotted tiger beetle. Uh, we have many different species of tiger beetles in Wisconsin and all throughout North America and all over the world. Uh, they are actually, a fun fact, they are the fastest uh, ground insect on the planet. So of all the uh, bugs that run, uh, these guys are the fastest. And you see they've got those long legs. They are very good sprinters. Um, they're very tiny. Uh, so when I say that, oh, they run, you know, they can run up to five and a half miles per hour. That is very fast. You got to remember how small these guys are. So they are, they're definitely sprinters. When you look at their jaws on the front, they have very, very powerful jaws uh, that they use to grab onto their prey. So they are hunters and they will outrun their prey uh, like a cheetah and tackle it and eat it. It's pretty cool. So here we have our milkweed beetles. We have swamp uh, milkweed leaf and red milkweed beetle. Uh, both of these guys are actually uh, bright fluorescent reds, but much like the dragonfly, once they've been pinned, they have lost their color. Um, when we think about milkweed, we always, uh, oh, the monarch caterpillar. Uh, well, yes, but the monarch is not the only insect that likes to munch on them. So both of these guys, in the summer, you'll see them crawling on it and feeding on it, uh, especially the red milkweeds uh, at Mequon Nature Preserve. You'll easily see about six of them on one plant, and they're very easy to notice with how bright and beautiful they are. So this little beetle right here is known as an alfalfa weevil. Uh, there are many different species of weevils. Generally, most of them are all very, very small. Um, they are a boring insect. Not boring as in not interesting, but as in they bore into things with their uh, mouth part. So they have a very long snout that they use to drill into uh, fruits, uh, dead or living plants, or their seeds, whatever the species uh, has adapted to. And they will drill into there and lay their eggs in there and then seal it. So the young actually grow up inside of their food source, which they uh, consume and then dig their way out of. And so this can be very damaging to crops or trees, depending on uh, if you are a landscaper, you might not be a big fan of weevils. Another interesting thing though about them is some of them are parthenogenic, meaning that they don't need to mate to reproduce. So the female will just lay a bunch of eggs that are clones of herself. Uh, so the last one I'll do is the click beetle. Uh, what's interesting, interesting about these little guys is that um, where they get their name from is they have a mechanism where if they are tipped over on their backs or if they think that they are in danger and they need to make a quick getaway, they will actually uh, snap their body and it makes a clicking, it's a click sound, but they, they pretty much click their way uh, into the air. They, they snap high up into the air and I think the best example I could think of, um, I don't know if you've ever seen those toys, they're like those little snap caps that you put on a table. Uh, it's pretty much the same principle where they have that energy stored up and it's locked and all of a sudden it's released and then they just go flying. And so that's uh, their getaway is to just kind of fling themselves. And I always thought that was kind of interesting. Well, that pretty much concludes our beetle video. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I hope it's been informative and I could talk for hours about beetles and there's just too much. There's just like there's a lot of beetles, there's a lot to know about them. And so if you uh, have gained more of an interest and you want to know more, uh, I recommend there's uh, lots of uh, YouTube videos you can see about them. Uh, there's probably plenty of books out there that 
uh, would be great resources. So I encourage you all to go out and learn even more about them. And to especially now that it's getting warmer, uh, head out onto the trails or even into your backyards. The beauty of beetles is they are everywhere. And so even if you go out in your backyard and just look around in the grass or any type of native plants, hopefully, uh, I guarantee you will find a whole bunch of different species within an hour. So uh, thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you in episode three. Uh, have a great day.